France's acceptance of the first defense and intervention frigate, Amiral Ronarkage, in Brest on October 17, 2025 is more than a routine fleet addition, it is a signal that Europe's surface forces are migrating to a fully digital, multi-domain architecture built for saturation threats and contested seas. After 14 weeks of trials and a September 19 arrival from Loria, the lead ship of the five-hull FDI program shifts from test car to operational workups, bringing an area defense and anti-submarine package into service within a compact 4,500-ton envelope. The handover upgrades the Marine Nationale's first-rank surface combatant tier and expands NATO's capacity to protect task groups against missiles, drones, and submarines from the North Atlantic to the Eastern Mediterranean. What distinguishes the FDI is not a single, hero, system but the way its subsystems are fused. The four fixed panels of the Sea Fire Active Electronically Scanned Array deliver continuous 360-degree surveillance and guidance quality data at refresh rates tuned for sea skimming threats and complex, multivector raids. That radar picture is married to Aster family interceptors for both local and broader area defense, enabling the ship to extend an air defense bubble around escorts, auxiliaries, and high-value units. The surface strike reach of Exocet MM40 Block 3C pushes lethality over the horizon, while a Kingclip MK2 hull sonar teamed with the Captus for compact variable depth sonar gives the frigate the low frequency reach and persistence needed to prosecute quiet submarines in difficult acoustic conditions. MU90 lightweight torpedoes close the kill chain. Layered survivability is reinforced by a 76mm gun, two narwhal remote weapon stations, soft-kill decoys, and Kanto anti-torpedo effectors, creating a dense defense in-depth against air, surface, and undersea attackers. The platform itself is optimized to make these systems count at sea for long periods. A CODAD machinery arrangement of roughly 32 megawatts driving controllable pitch propellers yields about 27 knots and endurance on the order of 45 days, adequate for blue water presence and high-tempo escort work. The inverted bow, now a hallmark of modern seakeeping and signature management, contributes to a quieter, drier ride and helps control radar and infrared observables. The flight deck and hangar accommodate a 10-ton helicopter and VTOL drones, turning the frigate into a sensor shooter hub able to extend detection and engagement geometries far beyond line of sight. Manning around 125 sailors plus an air detachment keeps the ship lean without sacrificing watch standing resilience, a balance enabled by extensive automation aimed at high availability and moderated through life cost. Under the hood, the architecture is as consequential as the headline weapons. The SETI's 3.0 combat management system sits at the center of the ship's data fusion, fire control, and tactical decision aids, but its potency rests on a dual, virtualized, digital core that spreads across two redundant data centers on board. That arrangement is engineered for cyber resilience and hot reconfiguration, allowing graceful degradation under attack and rapid insertion of new algorithms, decoys, or effectors without deep structural changes. The PSM module, which concentrates electromagnetic and radar apertures in a low observable superstructure, reduces topside clutter and drag while simplifying maintenance and future growth. In practical terms, the ship is designed to absorb change, new counter UAS tactics, improved electronic warfare libraries, or novel off board sensors, on an operational timescale rather than a generational one. The initial French fit strikes a measured equilibrium between magazine depth, weight, and mission flexibility. 16 Aster 1530ths in Silver A-50 launchers provide credible area coverage for a ship of this displacement, complemented by eight Exocet canisters for surface warfare and the full ASW suite with MU-90 torpedoes. By contrast, the Hellenic variant trades some margins to boost area air defense to 32 Aster 30B1 and adds a ram launcher for point defense, tailoring the same hull and combat system to the Aegean's tight choke points and high-density threat environment. Both variants retain the 76mm gun, narwhal mounts, Kanto countermeasures, and the core sonar pair, 
underscoring how common sensors and a shared combat system generate interoperability and supply chain leverage even when national fits diverge. For France and NATO, the timing of Amro Ron RKHS arrival matters. European navies are contending with simultaneous rearmament cycles, constrained manpower, and a threat set that spans hypersonic class profiles, agile uncrewed air and surface swarms, and increasingly stealthy submarines. A frigate that can create an air defense umbrella, contribute to cooperative ASW with helicopter dipping sonar and offboard sonobuies, and hold surface targets at range helps carrier groups, deterrent escorts, and independent patrols survive the opening salvo and shape the fight thereafter. In task group operations, sea fires fixed panel geometry and rapid revisit rate reduce blind arcs and tracking latency, improving the quality of data available for cooperative engagement. In literal operations, the ship's compact size and automation aim to sustain tempo in congested waters where clutter, civilian traffic, and gray zone tactics complicate rules of engagement. Industrial cadence is another strategic lever. Naval group signals an ability to deliver up to two FDIs a year as more hulls progress through outfitting, aligning a Franco-Hellenic line that blends national requirements with common back-end architecture. That production rhythm spreads non-recurring engineering across multiple customers, dampens unit cost growth, and preserves critical design and integration skills. It also opens a pathway for incremental modernization, new ESM suites, improved decoys, or additional hard kill cells, without the churn of starting from a clean sheet. The lead ship acceptance of D-660 thus anchors a programmatic arc that will run into the early 2030s for France and proceed in parallel for Greece, with immediate benefits to operational availability and long-term benefits to European naval resilience. Viewed through an operational lens, the frigate's most valuable attribute may be its elasticity. Against air and missile threats, Aster interceptors and sea fires guidance quality tracking furnish a credible shield for consorts and high-value units, particularly when layered with other NATO shooters. Against submarines, CAPTAS for compact brings the low-frequency reach that shallow or variable salinity waters tend to defeat, while Kinclip tightens localization in the close fight. Drones and small craft, now routine in maritime harassment and reconnaissance, are addressed by the radar's track capacity, the responsiveness of the 76mm and narwhal mounts, and the option to fold an embarked UAS for queuing. None of these roles is novel in isolation, their value lies in how quickly the ship can reprioritize and recompose its sensor shooter chain as tactical conditions change. There are, inevitably, trade-offs. A 4,500-ton hull cannot carry the magazine depth or survivability margins of a cruiser-scale combatant, and sustaining a credible area defense presence will require smart stockpile policies and cooperative magazines within a task group. The automation that enables a smaller crew raises training stakes for watchstanders who must master both kinetic and cyber contingencies. And while the dual digital core is designed for resilience, it also presumes disciplined configuration control across software baselines to prevent regressions under the pressure of rapid updates. The program's success will rest not just on the steel and silicon delivered in 2025 but on the Navy's ability to iterate doctrine, training, and logistics with the same tempo. Even with those caveats, the arrival of Amaral Ronarkh marks a pivot from promise to practice. France strengthens its balanced blue water posture, carrier escort, support to the deterrent, and crisis response remain the core missions, while NATO gains another interoperable node capable of plugging into allied data and fire control networks. Greece's higher capacity variant extends that effect into waters where reaction time is measured in seconds rather than minutes. As additional FDIs commission, the class will serve as both a fleet workhorse and a testbed for the digital methods that future European combatants will adopt. In that sense, the handover at Brest is not the end of an acquisition sprint but the start of an operational marathon in which adaptability, integration, and industrial stamina prove just as decisive as range rings and top speed.